Ashley, what is our next main topic today? Next one up is you and Callister. So I read somewhere that Disney is going to be re-editing their animated films for Disney Plus, specifically removing any radical um, ethnic offensive content from them, like the crows from Dumbo. My question is, why do this? I understand Disney doesn't want to represent this stuff in today's society, but removing content that's actually a core part of the film isn't right. Why don't they just, uh, why don't they just uh, WB Looney Tunes go the do- WB Looney Tunes route and have a banner come up explaining that these are the products of their time? All right, so not surprisingly, and we were kind of expecting this, we've talked about this a few times over the last couple of months, is, you know, when Disney Plus comes out, what are they going to do with material like Song of the South? What are they going to do with, you know, the original animated Dumbo with the crows? That, understandably so, to a number of people, is quite offensive. How do they, what are they going to do to approach this? Now, I've said this whole time, Rob, I said there is no way they're going to put Song of the South on Disney+. Plus. There's just no way. They're not going to do that. Bob Iger, his one main guiding North Star with every decision he makes, and we've seen this come up with how he's going to handle Deadpool and everything else too, is my audience comes first. My customers come first. We have seen that with Bob Iger over and over again, protecting and maintaining the trust and relationship between his company and his company's customers. That's always been Bob Iger's guiding North Star. Doesn't mean he always makes the right decisions, but whenever he makes decisions, you always know whatever is going to be the option that greater protects the relationship between his company and his customers, that's the decision he's going to make. So hearing that they've opted or that they're probably not going to be putting Song of the South on there, not a big surprise. And I'll be quite frank with you, the, the... The idea and the notion now that they're probably going to edit out some of the content from the original Dumbo, also not a surprise. This doesn't surprise me at all that they would that he would go this route. Now, for some of you asking, what what was he talking about in the message there about, uh, you know, a a one WB uh, screen? Well, on some things like Tom and Jerry, which in their history, their great wonderful history, hey, they've done some really racially insensitive stuff in there too. Was a product of the times. Warner Brothers for on stuff like that. They have sometimes put up this warning screen, a very well thought out, very well written warning screen that says this. The cartoons you are about to see are products of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that were commonplace in American society. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. While the following does not represent the Warner Brothers view of today's society, these cartoons are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming that these prejudices never existed at all. So there is that whole notion that they could be uh, how what's the best way to say it? They could be looking at a notion of uh, I mean it's it's an indiv- it's an interesting it's an interesting scenario that they find themselves in. It's an interesting scenario that they find themselves in. Do you go the one route? Do you not go that one route? Do you put in uh, just a warning and keep the original content? Do you just play it more safe and just take it out altogether? I'm going to tell you what I think about this, and uh, we, we see from here that Rob got disconnected from us. But I'm going to re I'm going to re add Rob here right now. Um, you know, we see situations like this where there's going to be two very strong and different points of view to be had. One point of view, obviously, is going to be you should not mess with what has been done before. You shouldn't mess with the way they did things. They are what they are. They were presented the way they were presented at the time. It is best just to leave them as such. And that is certainly one way of looking at stuff like that. That is certainly one way to approach it. That is certainly one way to do it. But I'm going to tell you what. I believe that what they did here and rob by the way can you hear me now oh but i don't have rob in in the microphone so give me give me one second here guys i'm gonna get rob back in here and get his audio added here and uh rob can you hear me now yes sir 
Okay, so Rob is back. There we go. Good to have you back, Rob. Um, <laughs> I thought I was banished to the Phantom Zone. <laughs> um, so the, what we're left with now is this decision that a Bob Iger has to make. And I can, this is one of those situations, Rob, where I can see both sides of the argument. I really can. Uh, about the whole notion. I, I think that Warner Brothers warning screen is a very thoughtful, well thought out, uh, well presented statement to say before something like that. I think that's beautifully put together. At the same time, I can see where a Bob Iger would want to look at something like, you know, regardless if we put up some kind of warning screen, this is going to offend some of our customers. And you don't say to your customers, you shouldn't be offended. No, they're your customers. And if they're offended, they're offended. And do you want to want, and, and here's the thing, if you're Bob Iger, do you want to launch Disney Plus under celebrations and confetti and everybody talking about the Mandalorian and everybody talking about Star Wars all coming together on the roof and talking about the upcoming new Marvel things and talking about the $7 a month price plan? Or do you want to launch Disney Plus and going, you know, Disney's leaving in those racist crows. You know, Disney's <laughs> going to be putting up songs. What do you, if you're Bob Iger, what do you want the narrative to be? And understanding that Bob Iger's position has always been cultivating that relationship between his company and his customers. Number one, it doesn't surprise me. But I'm going to tell you what else, Rob. I endorse this decision. Now, I would have totally been fine if they decided to take like a Warner Brothers route, really over communicated it to the audience, really put up all these disclaimers and all that kind of stuff. I would have been cool with that. I would have been cool with it. But I think the reality is you can do that till the cows come home. If they don't make a move like this now, then when Disney Plus launches, the narrative isn't just going to be about celebration, confetti, Star Wars, Marvel. It's going to be about what they did put in. And that's going to dominate the news cycle. And that's going to have a lot of people talking. And I get it. It's a tough situation. So, Rob, I think there's a lot of merit on both sides of this. I'm curious to know your thought. Number one. What would you do? Let me rephrase that. Number one, does this move by a Disney and Bob Iger in particular surprise you or does it make sense to you? And then number two, if you were in that position, how would you approach it? I don't honestly know what the 100% right answer is. So what do you think? Well, like you pointed out, it's I, I, I think obviously they want to they wanna start this streaming service celebrating what is great about it. And on the other hand, as we've seen, we live in an era where people are very quick to judge and very quick to get angry. And most people aren't aware of, of, of history. I mean, Dumbo is a film that's one of the oldest animated features in, in Disney's catalog. You've got Snow White, you've got Pinocchio, and you can go all the way back to Dumbo as well. And people don't understand just how old the movie is. They've got a new Dumbo in the theaters right now. And you're going to have a whole new generation of kids that have never seen Dumbo. And the first time they're going to see it is on this Disney streaming service. And I think he's making the right choice. Now, that said, I don't believe in censorship in any way, shape, or form. But I think they 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 start this way. And maybe later they can add a, a, an unaltered version of Dumbo with a card on it. And maybe show it, you know, occasionally and contextualize it. Have somebody introduce it, whether it's a, a, a movie pundit, a famous movie reviewer like a, a, a Leonard Malton or somebody else and contextualize the film and show it unaltered. They still have the unaltered version. But I think to start with, you know, they really need to think about their customers. They need to think about the world that we live in today and the fact that a lot of people, there are going to be people that watch Dumbo and think it was made last week. They're just, mm. you can't expect people to, to know their film history, they just don't. And we live in a world now, if you were a kid, let's say you, you, you know, you, you don't know, you know, you're a kid, you start watching this and what if the crows were your favorite characters in Dumbo and you go to school and you start spouting off their dialogue, you know, and people are gonna be like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you saying? And we live in, in a time where we need to be a little bit more sensitive. We're in a, a, an evolutionary period in our pop culture and our cultural history. Where, where a lot of people that were marginalized are getting a voice that they've never had before. And some people are overcompensating with that voice and some people are being overprotective. And it'll take a while, but it'll eventually shake out. Cooler heads will prevail. Our history <laughs> will be preserved. We will be less 
quick to be on a hair trigger to get angry or to get offended. But at this point in time, at this juncture, why not err on the side of caution and make sure that it is celebratory? And it's not like these things are going away. You know, and Warner Brothers had to make a lot of choices and decisions before they put up that disclaimer. It's a great disclaimer. And again, we're talking about the, a lot of those movies were propaganda films from World War II. Disney mm. did the same thing. But, you know, Dumbo, people don't quite understand. Like, what? This is a kid's movie? It's almost like, look, if they take out the Siamese cats and Lady and the Tramp, I might get, I might get really upset. But because uh, Lady and the Tramp's my jam. But, you know, until that point... I, I think it's a good decision. You know, I, and I I can already hear some people screaming, censorship is bad. It is bad. Guys, yeah. But get an understanding of what censorship actually is. Censorship is when you are not permitted to see something that you choose to see or you are not permitted to present something the way you want to present it. That's censorship. If Jurassic, if Universal was going to put something on Disney Plus and it was one of their movies and Disney said, okay, we'll do that. But we think that scene where the T-Rex in Jurassic Park blows away the outhouse and eats the guy as he's sitting on the toilet. We think that's a little bit traumatic. We're going to cut that scene out of your movie. That's censorship. Dumbo belongs to Sony. Sorry, to Disney. Dumbo belongs to Disney. It's theirs. And if we're saying that censorship is either not being able, not being permitted to see something that you want to see or not being able to present something that is yours the way you want to present it, then this is not censorship. This is their own material. They can do whatever they want with it. This isn't, if this was a situation of them taking somebody else's material and then, you know, maligning it or tearing it apart or breaking it down or cutting things out that becomes censorship but disney making a decision about a disney movie and what they want to do it's no more censorship than what george lucas did to the original star wars trilogy and none of us like what george lucas did to the original star wars trilogy with the special editions but none of us call it censorship because it's his it belongs to him he can present it however he wants to present it so I think this is an interesting discussion and debate to have, but leave the censorship element out of it, folks. This isn't this isn't some big brother taking other people's material and tearing it apart and saying, you're not allowed to show this to other people. This is, hey, this movie is ours. It belongs to us. How we want to present it and in which manner we want to present it and when, in which form we want to present it is totally up to us. It's our call. It's our movie. I also, if they John, want to do that, that's fine. I also think it's... You got it's the audience that also has to be taken into consideration. Like, oh, absolutely. The, War, the Warner Brothers, when they put out their World War II propaganda films, it's not like kids are going to be casually watching World War II propaganda animated films from the 40s. And, and Dumbo is this timeless classic. When you're a kid and you're watching it, you're not aware of when it came out, you're just watching it as another Disney animated feature. And kids. It's the, it's the child audience that we have to be. Look, I, I believe that, yes, in a perfect world, I would like to sit down and educate young kids about watching Dumbo. That would be great. But we don't live in that world. And we have to be mindful of what you're showing to children. And look, I'm the first guy that, that, that loves sex, violence, horrific stuff. But kids don't get that. You know, kids don't understand. They're watching these things without context. They don't understand what they're seeing. They don't understand history. And, you know, again, Disney can show Dumbo in an unexpurgated version later or, or announce that they're doing it when there is context to be provided. But if it's on their streaming service to be watched anytime by anyone, whenever they want to watch, you really have to be careful what, what kids have access to. Yeah. And, and again, I think the main point here that people need to keep in mind is, look, as an Italian, you know, white wasp that I am, n there's nothing in Dumbo that's particularly offensive to me, but that's fine. But we have to be cognizant of the fact that there's going to be people who there are things that came out of that era that would be considered hurtful and, and offensive. And what I would argue with anybody who would scream and yell that you got to keep the crows in there. I'm going to ask them, is it really important? Or, or is it really that important that it's more important to you? Like, is the scene with the crows so vital 
that it is worth hurting people to have it in there. And I agree with you, Rob. I think there's going to come a time when we have more cultural context, when we are a more educated group of people, when our society has gotten to a certain point that we're going to be able to do that and it's going to be fine. But I think Bob Iger's right right now. I, I think you nailed it on the head, Rob. I think he's got to think about his audience. He's got to think about his customers. And, and like I said earlier, he's got to think about what does he want the headline to be as Disney Plus launches? Does he want the headline to be, everybody celebrates the triumph of Mandalorian? Or does he want the headlines to be people being hurt and offended by this and this being on their channel? And you just got to be careful about that. So I don't know. Again, though, I see, I love Warner Brothers. This, honestly, this disclaimer screened by Warner Brothers, I don't know that anybody could have written this any better. Nope. I think it's perfectly written. I think it's great. So I totally see that approach as well. At the same time, I totally see Bob Iger's approach. So a lot of discussion to be had. And I'm sure we're going to be talking about this for many days to come.